This podcast is brought to you by the Ginger Camel Network. Visit us at www.gingercamelnetwork.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last episode of the season for the High Heat Podcast. This is also my last episode. Um, inshallah, we're going to start another season where someone else will take in because I'm going to do different things with my life. So I'm really excited about that. Um, if you guys want to still be updated with me, always follow me on my social media. I'd love that. Um, but yeah, let's start with the episode. So today we have a very special guest and someone that I really, really, really admire. Um, it's Reem Abu Hassan. She is the founder and owner of uh, Clay Encounters, which is a pottery studio in Qatar. Something that none of us, nobody ever thought that we would have here, but like when I first found out that, oh my God, there's someone who's teaching us, pot- who's teaching pottery in Qatar, I was so excited because there's not a lot of things you can do here. Like not a lot of unique, like hobby kind of things that you can learn and do here. So I was super excited. So welcome, Reem. Hi, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Anytime. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, so I'm an architect. Uh, I graduated a few years ago and then um, I decided to move back here. And when I moved back here, I don't know, I guess nothing really lived up to my my previous architectural experience. And then I just wanted to do pottery really badly and I couldn't find a place. So I tried setting one up in my house and it went miserably. And then at some point I was like, we need like a place for people to go and make things and all that that kind of stuff and because I love pottery and I've decided to basically become a potter okay so <laughs> let's go back a little bit okay you said you wanted to be an architect or sorry I, you I studied, am an architect yeah you are an architect. <laughs> no, sort of sort of <laughs> how did that start um you mean school wise yeah I mean like you know where did that interest come from Well, um, I remember, I think in my 11th grade, we went on like a, like this cruise and we went and we saw like the, the major architectural works, like the Parthenon, the, pa- the Pantheon and just like really iconic buildings and like the architectural where were world. You, where were you uh, located? Here then? in Doha. In Doha. Yeah. So I was here in high school. And then uh, after I saw all those buildings, I was like, oh, my God, I love architecture. And I went into like this crazy obsession. And then um, I don't know, I guess I just decided to become an architect then, like as soon as I came back and I started applying and I I just studied architecture. And then you fell in, you wanted to start learning pottery. So no, was- so actually, it was I was in architecture school, and then um, there was one pottery class that my professor was teaching, and I somehow got a seat in it. It was in very high demand, but somehow I, I got in, um, and I took that one class, and then as soon as I took it, I just I just couldn't stop doing it. So anytime I had like a crazy deadline in school, I would just go do some pottery and then go back. And what is it about like pottery that got you got you so attached to it? Um, I think it was um, like with architecture, we did a lot of digital fabrication. We did a lot of like models and things like that. So it sort of somehow related. I felt like it, it was still sort of in my comfort zone. Um, but it's just when I, I do mostly wheel throwing and there's just something you've tried the wheel. Mm-hmm. Um, once you sit on the wheel and you just you just work, there's something so soothing about it and very Um, not not instant gratification but like with a with a building it takes years to build and finish but with with pottery is it's like in two weeks you can have a pot that you've made um and it's just like the 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 texture of the clay I don't know there's just something about it that's very very soothing and that repeatable sort of action that you do on the wheel becomes very very therapeutic in a way yeah that's it's very cathartic I agree (laughs) I agree I mean I've I've taken a bunch of her classes and I I'm also a clay encounters potter, potter. <laughs> which is basically if you take like I think the basic uh, course yeah. and then you can just um, rent a, um, a wheel in the studio and you can you can do your uh, your own pots without anyone's help, which I suck at doing. No, <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, this is my first pot that I made um, with uh, with Reem's class. It's um, for people who are listening, it's blue and tiny and <laughs> how do we know that <laughs> it's like between a vase and espresso cup but but it, it's pretty well made like you can you can see if you saw my first pot you would be very proud of your pot 
Like it's you have the speckles, you have the textures, you have the colors. I think it, I think it's really cute. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So, um, so when I like my experience with pottery was, um, I think I, I wanted to do something because I was really overwhelmed, and I was like, and m- my friend was coming to you guys, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, and I came to the first class, and I remember I only was gonna come for one class just to really? try it out, <laughs> and then I tried it, and it was just so, it just makes you feel so like, I don't know, confident about yourself. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> Cause like you're just making something, and you're like, I think, I think the the like even if you're writing a poem, for example, or if you're if you're like painting, or if you're creating something, like the fact that you can like like channel your energy into something positive. Something, yeah. That I think that's really, really like what what makes this so so appealing. So yeah. So tell us. Um, okay. So you. You loved your pottery and then you came here and you wanted to learn pottery, but you didn't find any any classes. Yeah. So you decided, okay, I'm going to start my own. Yeah. And like when you started, like, did you have to learn and like, I don't know, because I know you're really good at what you do. I mean, people, you need to see her. <laughs> you need to see her pots. They're like gorgeous. Thank They're you. so beautiful. So so how did that happen? Like, So I... I, di- I didn't really, really need a place for classes. I knew it comes from practice, so I just mm. needed a place to sort of work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think, like, we've been in August. No, in September, we, we would have been open for a year. Um, so, like, in this last year, just doing pottery every single day, sort of, you it's like you teach yourself in a way. It's just constant practice, constant failure all the time, teaches you what not to do. So um, I felt like, it wasn't just about teaching people how to make things. It had to be that people can come in and practice on their own. So, because that's what I wanted. Because after a while, you don't want someone to to teach you like, hey, no, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this right. You just want to do it. Because you saw when you were in the open studio, I know it's kind of frustrating when you feel... Oh my god! A bunch oh of times. Oh my god! It's so frustrating. <laughs> but I was like, Rima needs to be here. Like, I don't know. I try to not be there. And like, I'm like, no one help them. They need to learn on their own. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I just I just felt like I needed a place to just practice, and I felt like um, Doha needed a place where people can just go in, walk in. You don't need to have you don't need to be a student to use the facility, or you don't need to have a specific uh, know a specific person to go in. It was just open for everybody. Anyone that wants to to come in can come in, and I think it's it's nice because over the past year we've grown like a um, like a family of potters sort of. So like it's like when I go and I see like seven eight people in the studio just working and helping each other out because when when everyone's failing at making something everyone like teams up and tries to help that one person so it's just i i like that there has become this um like a community like a like a place where people and a lot of people come when they're like really really stressed out and Mm -hmm. i love it when people walk in and they're sort of upset but then they leave like super happy and like relaxed and i think i think it's it was yeah. it was it was a good decision to quit my yeah. job for it. I, I wow. think. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And you're doing your master's now, so yeah. You're still, yeah, you're studying alongside. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how you're managing. <laughs> a Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> with a yeah, with a full time full time master. Oh my! Oh yeah. my God, Rima. <laughs> But I think I, I work best under pressure, so it just, it works out, and it just, it keeps me, it, it helps me make decisions quick, and I don't waste any time at all, so it, it, it works out. But, like, are there, like, what are the challenges that you face, like, trying to, you know, for anybody who wants to maybe start a business of their own, yeah. who's listening, and, you know, what, how can they improve their, like, I don't know, situation better, uh, if you have any tips or suggestions? Well, um, so... There's a lot, like the learning curve is huge because no one, like everyone warns you, but you don't really know what it's like until you you actually start. Like for me, I think the hardest part was figuring out all the legalities of everything. So like the necessary paperwork, the the signatures, the everything was just very, very overwhelming. But I think something else that, that a lot of people I think would face, well, at least I did, is when you when you're about to start, there's always a risk that you might fail. So you start asking everybody, you know, what do you think? Should I do this? Should I do that? Would this work? Would this not? So I had a lot of people tell me, no, don't do it this way. Don't do it that way. Don't open at the Pearl. Open in the mall. Don't open here. Don't don't make the walls white. Make them black. Like, it's just everything. Um, and I think my the, what, what, I, what I suggest is you you know what you want it to be. And after a while, I just zoned out everybody's opinions because I found out that nobody knows how, how it would work the way I envision it to work. So um, I say just 
go with what you what you believe in a way what your gut says yeah exactly because it's 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 really hard to take in everyone's opinion and like because you know like if my grandpa tells me no because my grandpa has his own business no this doesn't work that way blah 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 and I believed everything he said because you know he had a business but I found that you know he's open in a different field what 50 years yeah. ago and, you know what I mean like and it just plus, you don't have like a competitor or someone to compare to you're the only like pottery studio here so what are you gonna like who are you gonna look for inspiration as well right it's so luckily luckily because I was living abroad for a while I got to see a lot of um different studios that Mm -hmm. had that were just purely pottery and purely memberships in like a few classes Mm -hmm. so because I worked there because I joined open studios there I knew sort of how the pottery world Mm -hmm. works but I found that everything that works there does not work here so like at first I started like okay I'm gonna do it the exact same way the studio did it but just when you're in a different context, things work very, very, very differently. Mm-hmm. Especially here because there isn't a like an established pottery, I don't know if I can Commun- call it a scene or yeah, a community yeah, or yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. I sort of had to find a way that that to make it fit for the for the sort of people that I expected to come. And yeah. Okay. So um um I I just I wanted to ask you like um in terms of sorry. I lost my train of thought while you were talking about your pottery studio. Yeah, basically, um, you are doing a master's now. Yeah. Um, are you doing it in the, in, the, in the same field? No. So I, I was planning on doing it in architecture. And then I realized that um, I sort of knew what I was going to do if I did go into architecture. So I thought doing a master's in design studies um, gives me that opportunity to combine ceramics with whatever it is I'm designing. At the start, I I decided I didn't want to do any ceramics because I was doing so much ceramics outside of school. But now, luckily, in my sec for my second year, it's going to be purely ceramics. Um, so I I sort of try to find a link between the two just to to basically help them feed into each other. Um, so it's not. The, the good thing about this master's is that you can choose whatever medium you want to work with as long as you have a reason for it. Mm-hmm. So I've somehow f- found a way to combine them. And oh, wow. because I, I know I don't want to just do purely ceramics. I want to teach because I love to teach, which is why I think I enjoy clay encounters. And the degree is a terminal degree, which means I can teach with it when I graduate. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. like combining that teaching and maybe hopefully teaching somewhere else, um, teaching at VCU and at clay encounters maybe, or I don't know, so teaching in... I don't know, somewhere in the in the country or in the area um, would would work out. And then just taking design and applying yeah. it to craft and seeing how the two can sort of... And you are a brilliant teacher. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, honestly, you made me feel... You made us all feel so comfortable, especially for people who'd never touched, like, like properly, like, done anything with clay in, in our lives, you yeah. know, just to, just to, like, be so patient with us while we were ruining our no. pots. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I know what it was like. It's really, really hard. Like when yeah. you first, first start and and the teacher is, is, goes really, really strict and doesn't make you feel comfortable, it can put yeah. you off pottery really, really easily. Yeah. And then I think like I realized, oh, I really miss Reem when I started doing the open studio by myself. And I... like it was a freaking workout. Like it was, I, I didn't have to do arm workouts. Like, yeah. You don't have to do yeah. it anymore. People think it's just a piece of clay, but the, you have to fight it. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like it's. <laughs> Me against this clay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was just like, oh my god, I don't know, I don't know how. Re- yeah. So, so I, I definitely think you're you're really good at, at teaching. Oh, thank you. Um. Okay. So, I was, I want to talk a little bit about the response you got because, I mean, pottery is, is like very well known and like you know, like for me personally, like in those shanty towns or like you yeah, know, like hipster, <laughs> hipster places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Something like introducing something like that to Qatar, uh, to like to people who like right now it's like it's a it's an it's a craft that most people don't think they need or like they need to learn or they they even need like pots or whatever because we have yeah. like so many different kinds of like whatever objects around us. So how how was that? Did you have to do any sort of like awareness like or education or what of the community? What what was it like? Okay, so that's a tough question, but um. So I think location plays a part. Mm -hmm. So I felt like if we opened in an art center or if we opened in like a, I don't know, in a community center, community space, then people would have purely seen it as like, oh, it's a craft. And like I go there to learn just how you go to learn to draw or you go to paint, you go to learn pottery, which is where it's usually located. Um, 
but I felt like it you, you know how like coffee shops now are like where everybody goes and like I never used to go to the Pearl because it was I just used to go have coffee have dinner and go home and I just felt like having it in a location where people can feel like it's it's not just a method of learning how to make something but also like an experience I think the experience of it is is the most important thing and when you come from uh, like a cafe or a restaurant or whatever in the area and you come in and you see that this is how a simple pot is made or like I can make my own coffee cup instead of going in and buying my own coffee cup that sort of I think that connection gave people that 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 need to make their own pots or or come by a special cup because once you go through a class or like the full course and you realize how much um, time and effort and work yeah. and patience and how many things can go wrong and break it automatically raises that sort of awareness of the importance of a cup just like a simple cup like if every morning like I love nothing more than when people send me a photo of the, the cup that they they made and they drink from it every single day I think And then their friends see, oh, look, hey, I made this cup all on my own. And then, oh, my gosh, mine is just like a cup I bought from, I don't know, some some store Ikea, or something yeah. from Ikea. Then it automatically spreads that um, that appreciation for something that's handmade, for something. And I think it's more about the experience behind the pot that attaches the people to the pot. It's Definitely. not the pot itself. Yeah. Um, so I think that that sort of helped with that and then obviously Instagram because everyone comes in and has to take a photo of their pot and send it to their friends and all that stuff so I think it it it, it sort of that's what helped so it's like that. word of mouth basically for you yeah I, I, else. I think so yeah and that's the way I wanted it I, I didn't want it to be a huge like business and a huge marketing campaign and things like that where it's just about oh look there's a pottery studio you should go there oh look we sell cups you should come buy a cup like I think we wanted it to be something small something sort of Um, I don't know how to explain it, but something that's not a corporation or an institution or mm -hmm. something run by by a huge art center or supported by a huge like it's literally just you me and like yeah. So it just I think I think that gives the place like a little bit of a charm and it, it I think because I enjoy going to workshops and places where it's run by a few people. It's small. It's not the main aim is not to become a huge successful business, and that's why I'm resisting. Um, making it get bigger or growing it or adding more attention to it I just I like it the way it is and I, I think mean it is very it, I, I do agree with you it, it has a real charm like your studio just the fact that look okay there are two people over there that I know yeah are always there <laughs> too and um Jackie Jackie yeah Um, and that's it. And, you know, you guys are handling everything. Like, we, we build a relationship with you as yeah. well. And with Jackie, you know, because you're, you're meeting each other so constantly. It's just It just feels like a very, like, family sort yeah. of environment. A very nice vibe. Yeah, a very friendly vibe. So, I think, like, I mean, personally, like, from what I've seen on your social media and, like, trying to register to your classes is such a pain. <laughs> because... <laughs> Because you're so popular, it's annoying. It's anno <laughs> I, I know, I feel really bad. I'm always like struggling to add more and more and more classes, but they're just, there isn't enough time in the day. And there's, it's just, I, I know it, it gets annoying because I, I know I'd be upset if I couldn't get a class, but um, we're trying. Like, I mean, I'm you trying know, to add more. I, I, don't, I don't know when you guys started exactly, but I found out about you last summer. That's when we opened. Oh, wow. We okay, opened, good. like, okay. literally August 1st was our soft opening and September 1st was our, like, official Okay, opening. that's pretty cool. So I found out about it then, and then every single time, like, I followed you and, like, obsessively... Really? Oh, I swear, I'm not even joking, like, obsessively checked your page every day, like, okay, is she gonna post, like, okay, new classes, blah, blah, blah. And then I think I came, like, end of last year or something. So yeah. it was just <laughs> so full the whole time. People are booking, like, I don't know, as soon as you post, it's just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it's, is it's, going it's, on? <laughs> like, luckily, I, like, like, alhamdulillah, I'm really, I feel very blessed that people caught on to it and that everyone was interested in it. Because um, I think, I think that also, because the place sort of, there, it's, I don't want to say like a, like, it's not something people want to, like, if I don't go today, I'll never go. People want, like, the more you see people getting a class and you don't get a class, I think people start to... Want it, want it more, which I which I didn't want to happen. I want to give everybody a class, but we just but we, you're busy we, we and can't, you're studying, you know, you yeah. Want to and like like now in the summer, we literally like have back to back classes from like 10 a.m. to like 10 p.m. Um, and during the year, we also have a lot, but we'll I'll try. 
<laughs> so what are your future plans? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> so I like it the way it is right now. Um, <coughs> I do want to focus a little bit more on just making like because when you teach a lot of classes there's less time for us to experiment and explore and like right now it's it's really great because I I set myself I have like a commitment now because we now sell our pots at the National Museum so I have to oh, wow. come up with 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 exclusive collections just That's for the amazing. museum Congratulations. yeah it was it was it was really exciting but I, I'm very excited because it forces me to create new collections every month and um And that way I can sort of start to prioritize. I think that's step one into prioritizing making. Um, because I didn't open it so that we can become like these crazy manufacturing like pottery studios that make like 200 cups for cafes and things like that. Because mm -hmm. I that I found that that's what some people wanted and I needed to say no, we're not. And it's hard to say no to a lot of people. Um, but I think in the future I want to sort of find a balance between making and um, just teaching and classes and things like that. That's amazing. Yeah, because it also inspires, like, the students. Like, people come in, they see what's being made. Oh, I love this cup. I want to make something like this. Yeah, yeah, Or, oh, my gosh, I love how you combine this color with that shape or something oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, so, we looked, oh, we want that color or we want this, like, design. Of yeah, like, on that round table, yeah. yeah. So, I, I think it, it they, they feed into each other, <laughs> I mean, you, know? you fail miserably at it. <laughs> <laughs> It's close, close enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I think I remember, like, I was trying to make, like, this, what is it called? The curvy, like... You know the the vase, the yeah, but like, <laughs> like, like wider at the bottom and really thin at the top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember you came and you were like, "If it, what is it?" <laughs> <laughs> really? Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was that. <laughs> was it this one? No, no, this no. is no. This is, but this was um, I made it with you and your. This um, was during the oh, during the open your, studio. You mean during yeah, the yeah. open studio? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you have to feel like when I first learned, I didn't make like a decent thing for like literally almost a month. Because you just, you won't know until you yeah, fail. In yeah, a way. yeah, that's what I kept telling myself that that's what you said. I was like, yeah, in one month and then, <laughs> then it's going to be great. If <laughs> yeah, some people catch on really quickly. Some people, I yeah. wasn't someone that caught on that quickly. It took yeah. me a lot, a long time. But it's just, if you do it every day, I know you can't do it every day. But like the more you practice, the more you, you, you get it at some point. Yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much for joining thank us. It was a pleasure. Me. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm so glad I got to do my last episode. With you. I'm so sad you're leaving. <laughs> I can't believe this is the last episode. Yeah, me too. I'm really, I'm really sad about leaving Doha Heat, but um, inshallah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have much more fun people. Than, not as fun as me, but <laughs> <laughs> in the future there there will be some better hosts, inshallah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you guys for listening. I had a great year hosting the show with you guys. Um, and thank you for all your support and all your love. Um, take care. See you guys next season. Not from me, but someone else. Aww.